What's up everybody, it's your boy Trayvon here with Scent Talk TV. And today I will be going over two cheapies that I got from my local TJ Maxx and Marshalls from the house of Joseph Abood, if I pronounce his last name right. Now, these two particular cheapies, I, one of them I had in my collection for a couple of months now and really didn't decide to make a full review until I came across the other one, which I did have already, but I took it back because I think the it was too familiar or something like that, but I felt like, you know, it was good enough to, you know, repurchase and do a full review on that one as well. So I thought about, I thought about it and I was like, you know, why not? You know, I'll just do two of these fragrances. I got one, so I might as well get the other one and combine them and do a full review for you guys because a lot of you have been, you know, requesting one of these fragrances or both of these fragrances, but I'm talking too much. Without further ado, let's just jump into it. And those two fragrances from the house of Joseph Abood, this is Joseph Abood's Mountain and Joseph Abood's Bespoke. There you go. So let's get uh, Bespoke out the way, shall we? Now, before we jump into the fragrance itself, let's just get the box presentation out the way. Here is the front of the box. You know, you got the name of the house up top. You got the name of the fragrance right there. Size and concentration. This is the EDP concentration. Here's what it looks like on the sides. On the other side, it has a Joseph Abood logo right there on both sides. On the top of the box, you have Joseph Abood right there, as well as the logo. On the back of the box, you have the name of the house and the fragrance, size and concentration and all that great stuff. And you got the ingredients and some information right there and nothing at the bottom here. Okay, forgive me. I made a slight error with the presentation on the back of the box because I told you that it looks like this, but really it's supposed to look like this. It has a, a brief little presentation of the notes that's inside of this fragrance, which I believe and feel that that is pretty dope. When you open the box up, the bottle sits inside the box like this. Nothing on the inside of the sleeve of the box. Now here is your bottle. This is how the bottle looks on the front. Hopefully you guys can see this. You know, you can't really see it because it's very, very transparent. Uh, you got the name of the house and as well as the name of the fragrance with the size and concentration at the bottom of this sticker here. Here's how the atomizer looks. The top of the cap looks like this. Nothing on the inside of the cap. The cap is a snug fit. Let's see what the atomizer is looking like not bad i expect a little bit worse but it's pretty decent i like it all right what do i get out of this fragrance in the opening it opens up kind of with a synthetic type of a twinge to it a little bit of a synthetic vibe to it but not too much not too dominant but other than that it opens up really really spicy and warm it has like this very warm bubblegummy type of a smell to it that's sweet spicy and masculine at the same time. It has a little bit of a creamy sweetness to it as well as it dries down on your skin. But oh, when it opens up quite aggressive with that spiciness and it smells quite nice at the same time. It does have a little bit of a warm fruitiness of it as well, like a tart warm fruitiness, if you will, in the opening. But the dry down is beautiful. I really do love the dry down of this because it gets like more masculine, sweet and warm. Very, very dope in my opinion for $15 and some change. I forgot to show off that price, but the price sticker was on the cellophane, which is long gone. So yeah, I got this for $15 and some change. All right, so the notes that's in this fragrance is in the top, grapefruit, mandarin, rosemary, and nutmeg. So immediately I get that rosemary in terms of that green spice that it gives off on my skin and then the fruitiness from the grapefruit, that tart grapefruit fruitiness that's juicy and tart-like and fruity from the grapefruit, grapefruit and the mandarin orange, you know, that's what I get is that those citruses, that tart-like citruses that is kind of spicy in terms of that the citrus and fruitiness from those two fruity notes with that rosemary, you know, it's very, very spicy, very, very tart-like and fruity when it uh, as it opens up. 
Now, the nutmeg is what brings a lot of warmth and sparkle to it, and it also gives it, gives it some more spice as well. Like I stated before, really, really spicy and, and aggressive in the opening, you know, to the point where it kind of gives off like a synthetic type of a vibe, but not too much at all. The nutmeg is what brightens it up, like, you know, in a warm aspect of a way, sparkly and warm. But once you get into the mid, the mid is where the magic happens because of that rum. That rum gives it like a warm booziness to it. That rum, lavender, cedar, and rose. Now, when it comes to that rose, rose, I really don't get like no masculine rose or no feminine rose. You know, it's not too aggressive. It's not too noticeable in your face. It's not a main player in the uh, in terms of the uh, mid notes. You know, it's kind of hanging back, chilling. You know, it's doing this thing on its own. And the cedar wood, you get a little bit more of a spice, even more spices, you know, in terms of a, you know, the woodsy spice that cedar wood gives off. Then you get the lavender that gives it more of a little bit more of a powdery floral dopeness to this fragrance with that rum. Boozy and powdery as well as, as woodsy with a slight bit of a floral accord in the mid as it transitions into the base. In the base, you get some leather, moss, tonka bean, and some vanilla bean. Okay, you know, the tonka bean gives it like a little bit more of a dry, sweet, somewhat of a, you know, dry, sweet, dope, masculine accord. When it's mixed in with that moss, that moss gives it like a little bit more masculinity, more of a green, dry, foresty type of a smell, as well as that leather. Leather and rose are very, very distinct in this fragrance. You know, I really don't pick it up too much, but I do get like a slight hint of it, you know, here and there as the fragrance persists, persists on my skin. So that rum and that fruity accord that you get from the grapefruit and the mandarin works very, very nicely with each other. When it dries down, that vanilla bean, you know, gives it more like a milky creaminess with that booziness with that rum. And it's like warm and spicy with a soft, sweet, fruity undertone as it dries down on your skin, at least on my skin. So overall, this fragrance, spicy, boozy as it dries down and creamy and milky with that vanilla bean as well as a light touch of a floral aspect that's powdery as well as the nutmeg giving it more warmth and spices to it. This is a great fragrance for the price and the scent DNA of this fragrance and that price can't go wrong. I highly advise you to pick it up for the price because I went on Joseph Abu's website and they're selling this for like 90, 98 bucks in a gift set. It comes in this size and it comes in the travel size as well as I think it's like a body wash and a lotion, which I still think is overkill with that price because this one right here for $15 and some change is a steal and I will not pay no more than that. So the moment you've all been waiting for, the performance and longevity. Okay now, you know, $15 and some change, what more do you expect? So I'm not really knocking it, knocking this fragrance in the head with the performance because the performance i wish it could be a little bit better it was kind of weak you know it wasn't like you know a beast it wasn't really moderate to average or average to moderate or anything like that it was below average so when i say that if you overspray with this i will say that you will have a nice time a decent average time with this if you overspray but anyway i digress you know, the total longevity I got out of this was a good solid four to five hours. Ugh, I know. But you know, the projection was good within like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, then it set really close to the skin softly, you know, but you still get like, you know, a couple of whiffs here and there. And, you know, I'll expect it to be a little bit more based on how good this smells on my skin. I really do dig how this smells, but, uh, I just wish the performance was, was a little bit better, like 45 to an hour of projection, you know, became a skin scent like between the two to three hour mark and, you know, total longevity, four to five hours on my skin. So if you don't mind the performance, at least on my skin, I say pick this up anyway. And no, if you're wondering, I did not receive any compliments because I haven't worn this enough but it does have a factor to pull you and give you those compliments if that's what you're looking for. 
but I didn't get any. Now, in terms of the seasons, I always say, you know, where, whenever, however, it doesn't matter, break the rules, whatever. Specifically though, based on that vanilla bean, that rum, that nutmeg, giving it like a nice little warm little vibe to it that is more suited for fall and winter time, I would say fall and winter time, maybe spring. You know, when it comes to fragrances for the spring, I expect it to be like a little bit more like a green, fresh, bright, you know, masculine floral or feminine floral type of an aspect of a fragrance, which is a nice profile for me to wear in the spring. And it really doesn't give off that profile enough for me to wear it for the spring. And it's definitely not suited for, you know, summertime and high heat. But considering the fact that it's not a beastly performer, it's not a beastly projector, I would say if you wanted to wear this in like, you know, the summertime, you probably will be okay if it's not too, too humid and hot. Wear it at nighttime because it's not loud and it doesn't have great performance, but I think a little heat would kind of push it off and make it a little bit better. But be careful if you go that route, just be careful. Okay, now, if you're wondering about the age group that can wear this, I will say this is more of a younger guy to middle age. But, you know, if you like it, no matter what age that you are, wear it whenever, however. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But, you know, specifically, I will say it has a nice a bit of a, uh, you know, a sweet, playful seductiveness for the younger guys to middle age to pull off. So, yeah, I think it would be more suited for those age brackets but wear it whatever age that you are it doesn't matter all right so should you buy joseph aboud's bespoke for 15 dollars and some change i really think that you should you know in terms of the way that it smells disregard the longevity because it could be a lot better and it, the longevity on this is quite disappointing but for 15 dollars and some change what could you expect what do you expect but yeah, for the price, I think it's worth a pickup if you're a fan of boozy warm scents. All right, up next, we have Joseph Abood's Mountain. Same style bottle, just a different color. Same everything from the cap, all that good stuff with the cap, with a sticker uh, at the bottom, nothing on the size, you dig it. Same as the other one, it's just green, of course. You know, logo on the sides, Logo, Joseph Abood at the top, all that fun stuff at the bottom. At the back, same thing, ingredients with the notes at the bottom, which again, I think it's dope. Is the atomizer the same? Pretty much, no different. Now with this one, I appreciate the opening way better than Beast Folks, because this one in particular opens up very, very well and captivating to my nose because it has a note of peppercorn in the opening that opens up very fresh, green and spicy and herbaceous with a little bit of a rosy touch to it. And it is not loud, well, it is loud, I will say it is loud, And but the, the spiciness that you get in Bespoke is not as loud in this one. It does open up spicy, sweet and bubblegummy at the same time and also fruity at the same time. All right, the top notes. The top notes list as follows. It is peppercorn, grapefruit, and lemon. Now, like I said before, when it comes to that peppercorn, you know, you get that fresh herbaceous type of a spice with a little bit of a masculine, somewhat masculine, and also feminine floral rosy note as well. That's green and dope. So when you go into that grapefruit, you do get that same like fruity tartness that Bespoke gives off with that fruitiness. You get that same vibe with that grapefruit, but it's a little bit more tart and a little bit more citruses when it comes to that lemon that, lemon that Bespoke doesn't have. And once you transition into that mid though, you get some cedar, white jasmine, and rose petals. White jasmine on my skin is very like a citrusy white floral note on my skin. It gives off that vibe. You know, it does become a little bit more masculine as that cedar starts to creep in, giving it a little bit of a spicy, woodsy touch to it. And the rose petals gives a little bit more of a green floral, you know, rosiness 
as it dries down on my skin. Very, very well adaptive to that fruitiness and that spice that's in the top. So lastly, the base notes, patchouli, labdanum, saddlewood, and musk. Patchouli, dark, sweet, mysterious, green, amazing. I love patchouli. You know, the labdanum gives it like a little bit more of a warm, like ambery type of a floral note, which is not too noticeable on my skin, but as it dries down, you do get a little hint of it, you know, meshed in very well with all the other notes. So the saddlewood gives like a creamy, milky type of a woodsiness that's smooth, very, very smooth. Musk, dry animalic and masculine. Very, very adaptive to that cedar and that patchouli as it dries down on my skin. It smells really, really nice. So overall, I know that was a mouthful, but overall you just get this dope, like fruity, like fruity spice, like a dope fruity spice with a little bit of a floral, uh, floralness in the background that's bubblegummy and sweet and playful and spicy, if I didn't say that already, which I think I did, with a lot of masculinity in that base, meshing all that together into a great cheapy bottle of dopeness from the house of Joseph Abood. Now, the steak and potatoes of every fragrance that you wear is the longevity and the projection. Now, I have a little bit of good news compared to Beast Folks because this one right here compared to the performance and the projection was a lot better than the one that I've already presented. And it doesn't really stray away to like, you know, the performance and the longevity, you know, from Beast Folks. It's just a little bit of an elevation of performance compared to Beast Folks. I would say that this one right here gave me a nice hour of projection, set close to the skin after that. Then it gave me the total longevity to five to six hours. However, it did become a skin scent after the three hour mark, but it, you were still able to pick it up a lot. Compared to Bespoke, you had to really dig your nose into it to really get like, you know, to notice it. You know, you get like one little whiff here and there, but this one right here, you know, you get constant whiffs here and there, but it's not beastly whiffs. You know, it's subtle, soft, intimate type of a whiff, which is there, it's there, but it's not beastly and it's not all in your face being obnoxious or anything like that. It's just soft and close to your skin. The other one is, it was just ridiculously soft. I had to really have to like that to get to, you know, smell and see if it's still there. But this one, it does its thing. I'm talking too much. Compliments, didn't receive any. All right, when it comes to the seasons, I will say this one is, uh, ooh, that's a good question. This fragrance is warm because of that labanum. And it's also fruity and playful and bright when it comes to that grapefruit and that jasmine and that lemon and a little bit of those rose petals and that rosemary kind of, give, kind of gives it like a green brightness, at least in the opening, top to the mid. Uh, I will say this is good for all year round. However, nighttime wear. It's not that bright, you know, daytime wearing type of a fragrance. It's more suited for like evening, you know, a little bit more of a, you know, a night out, you know, going to like a club or out with buddies or something like that, you know, it's kind of for that setting. You know, it's not for like, you know, daytime wear, but if you want to wear it in the daytime, obviously you can, but I'm saying in specifics, you know, I would wear it around, you know, the evening wear, you know, in terms of like, you know, all seasons really, more suited for like, you know, fall and maybe winter time, but I still think that you can pull this off in like in all seasons. You know, it's not gonna, it's not that much of a powerhouse of a fragrance to the point where you, it, it gives you a little bit more of a complexity in terms of wearings. It's not that fragrance at all. So I will say this is a good all year round scent. All right, now when it comes to that age group, you can wear whatever age that you are, you can wear it whenever, however, whatever age you are. I don't care if you're 80, if you like it, wear it, it doesn't matter. But specifically, of course, in all my videos, of course, I will say that this one is more for the youthful crowd as far as like, you know, younger guys to middle age because it does have a lot of fruity playfulness that is seductive and immature. And it will give you and garner you compliments if that's what you're seeking because it does have that profile and factor to it. So yeah, youthful, middle age, you dig it.
Okay, so from the house of Joseph Abood, should you pick up Joseph Abood's mountain? I honestly think that you should over Beast Folk because in terms of that smell and the performance, this does the job very, very well in that department versus Beast Folk because I do love the way that it smells. This one also gives off like a like an Invictus type of a smell to it. You know, that sweet bubblegummy, you know, playful, like crowd pleasing smell that Invictus gives off. You can get it here in a cheapy bottle, cheap fragrance like this. So I would definitely pick this up over Beast Folk. But if you're a collector like me, I'll say get both. You can't go wrong with both, but the better player is this one. So that's all that I have for Scent Talk TV, ladies and gentlemen. As always, you know what to do. You gotta like, comment, share, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything, and I will see you guys in the next video. Be safe out there and be blessed and have a good one. I'm out of here. Peace.